Next is the hydration of alkynes. Remember that a hydration means we're adding water. Now we can't just add water by itself. We need to catalyze the reaction. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, we can use an acid like H2SO4. But in some cases we need an even more enhanced catalyst than sulfuric acid and we'll use mercury. Use HGSO4. This particular catalyst is needed to hydrate terminal alkynes, which are even less reactive than internal. So in this example, we have an internal alkyne. So all we need is the sulfuric acid and water. And we're going to add water across the triple bond, H and OH. Now, because this internal alkyne is symmetrical, we just have a methyl on each end, it doesn't matter which side we add the hydrogen to and which side we add the OH to. So we're going to add H and OH across the pi bond. So let's just say we add the hydrogen to this carbon, the OH to this carbon. We end up going from the alkyne to the alkene. We still have the methyl groups, but now we have a hydrogen here, OH here. This product we get has an alcohol bonded to an alkene. This is called an enol. And enols aren't very stable. Um, in fact, they don't hang around for long. They'll rapidly change into an aldehyde or a ketone. And this change is called a tautomerization. So in this case, we have our enol. This will undergo tautomerization. And we're going to look at the mechanism of this next. But the simple way to draw the tautomer product is we're going to draw our main carbon framework. So there's our four carbons in the chain. Eliminate your double bond, get rid of it, and then turn the OH into a double bonded oxygen. So in this case, we ended up with a ketone. So the general way to make the tautomer is to erase the pi bond of the C double bond C, and then make the COH bond a C double bond O. Let's work through the mechanism for this reaction. It's going to be two main steps. The first is formation of the enol. The second will be the tautomerization. The very first step is similar to addition of HBr, where we have our acid as an electrophile, and then instead of Br as a nucleophile, we're using water. But it's going to be a similar process where the lone pair on the oxygen adds to one of the carbons of the pi bond, and then the pi bond reacts with the proton. When we do that, we get the alkene, and we'll have on one side water added, OH2, since there's three bonds on the oxygen, that'll get a positive charge, and then on the other carbon, we've added the hydrogen. Next, we need to get to the enol by removing one of these protons. And we can do that by either just using B as a generic base, or if you want to use another molecule of water and use the lone pair in the oxygen, that's fine also. So we'll come over and take a proton from that, and we get the enol. Once we have the enol, we do the tautomerization step. There's a couple of different tautomerization mechanisms depending on the conditions, whether they're acidic or basic. 
since we're using an acid, we're going to look at the acidic conditions for tautomerization. So we start with our enol, and that's going to be in the presence of acid. And you really already know what happens when you have a double bond in the presence of acid. The double bond reacts with the proton. So now, in addition to the proton that was already on that carbon, we now have the second hydrogen. We still have our OH, but there's now a positive charge next to the OH. And this is key right here. We always add the hydrogen to the side opposite the OH because you always want the positive charge next on the carbon next to the OH. And that's even more important than Markovnikov's rule. Why is that? Well, if you start with this structure and you look, there's a lone pair on the oxygen. We know that a lone pair next to a positive charge is resonance stabilized. So the fact that we have resonance is going to help us out. And that's going to make this more st stable. So here's our other resonance structure. And now we're almost at the ketone. We just had this protonated ketone, and you can use a base to take that proton away. So you can use water again, or just B. This time I'll use B. That will come and take this hydrogen, push those lone a lone pair onto the oxygen, and leave us with the product. So I've drawn these hydrogen in, but you can obviously leave them implied. And then the byproduct here, if you want to draw it, is just the protonated base, HB+. Likewise, I, to be most accurate, I should have done that up here, so we protonated water as the byproduct and regenerated acid, H3O+. Here's a question that I would like for you to pause for a minute and try. We now have an internal alkyne, and as soon as you see that, you should know there's no Markovnikov selectivity. So with that in mind, see if you can predict the product or products for this reaction and you're given some choices. When we do this, we have the triple bond, but since there's no Markovnikov selectivity, we have the option of adding H to one carbon and OH to the other, or vice versa, OH to this carbon and H to this carbon. So if we draw both of these outcomes, uh, the blue pathway will go from the alkyne to the alkene, and we still have an ethyl group and an isopropyl group. And it really doesn't matter in the final product, but the hydrogen and OH do actually add on opposite sides, so trans. So there's one enol intermediate. Then if we follow addition from the red H and OH, we would go from the alkyne to the alkene. Again, we still have the ethyl and the isopropyl, but now the OH will go on the right carbon and the H on the left carbon. So we can walk through the mechanism or just follow the basic um, guidelines for converting an enol into its tautomer. And for this red one, if we erase the double bond, we go from a double bond to a single bond. I'm going to leave the hydrogen implied and then make the OH a double bond O. So now look and see if you can find where this matches. We need a ketone with a CH2 isopropyl group and an ethyl group on it. That's what we have in B. Here's the CH2 isopropyl, here's the ethyl. So B is a product. And then if you do the same thing to the structure in blue, 
if I can squeeze it in here, we have, instead of an alkene, that'll go to the alkene. I'll make the hydrogen here implied, and then the OH becomes a double bond O. So we should have a ketone with an isopropyl group and a propyl group attached. So now look, and that's what we have in C. So C is our other product.